Good afternoon. I'll be lecturing on the current WHO guide for rabies pre- and post-exposure treatment in humans. The WHO strongly advocates the production and use of modern vaccines. The inactivated purified cell culture and duck embryo vaccines containing at least 2.5 international units per dose in both developed and developing countries. The WHO also supports the trend to limit or abandon completely the production of brain tissue vaccines where economically and technically feasible. If modern vaccines are not available, brain tissue vaccines, preferably those prepared on suckling mouse brain or SMB, may be administered. SMB should have a potency of at least 1.3 IU per dose regardless of the number of doses required for a full post-exposure treatment. Immediate wound treatment and combined immunoglobulin and modern vaccine treatment virtually assure prevention of infection. So the categories of exposure and recommended treatments. For category 3 exposures, wound treatment plus rabies immunoglobulin plus vaccine for all exposures is warranted. These are the single or multiple transdermal bites or scratches, contamination of mucous membrane via saliva such as licks. For category 2, vaccine and disinfection is warranted. This such as in nibbling of uncovered skin, minor scratches or abrasions without bleeding, or licks on broken skin. For category 1 exposure, no treatment is required if the history is reliable, such as just mere touching or feeding of animals or licks on intact skin. Pregnancy and infancy are never contraindications to post-exposure rabies vaccination. Persons who present for evaluation and treatment even months after having been bitten should be dealt with in the same manner as if the contact occurred recently. Wounds should be treated immediately and serum and vaccine therapy instituted as soon as possible after exposure. Initiation of treatment should never await the results of laboratory diagnosis. Deferring treatment. If the species is unlikely to be infected with rabies, treatment may be deferred depending the outcome of laboratory diagnosis provided that the diagnosis can be made within 48 hours. If the dog at the origin of exposure is more than a year old and has a vaccination certificate indicating that it has received at least two doses of a potent vaccine, the first not earlier than three months of age and another within six to twelve months later, the bitten patient may not need treatment and the dog should be observed for ten days. If the dog shows any sign of illness, the patient should receive post-exposure treatment. For wound treatment, this should be immediate and is essential even if the person presents after a prolonged period. Chemical or physical elimination of rabies virus at the site of infection is the most effective mechanism of protection. Immediate washing and flushing with soap and water, detergent, or water alone is imperative. After washing, you may use ethanol 70% or iodine tincture or aqueous solution. Administration of rabies immunoglobulin or RIG. Careful installation in the depth of the wound and infiltration around the wound is warranted. As much as anatomically feasible of the RIG must be infiltrated around the wound even if the lesion has begun to heal. Any remainder should be injected intramuscularly at a site distant from that of vaccine inoculation, as such as into the anterior thigh if necessary divided between the two thighs, not in the gluteal region as it may not go into muscle. Postpone suturing if possible. If not, ensure that RIG has been applied locally as above and apply antimicrobials and tetanus toxoid. The dose is 20 international units per kilogram of human RIG or 40 international units per kilogram of equine RIG and do not exceed the total recommended dose. If the total dose is insufficient to infiltrate all wounds, dilute two to three fold to be able to infiltrate all wounds thoroughly. Equine RIG, uh, skin test must be performed. 
prior to its administration. However, a negative skin test is not an assurance that no reaction will occur. Epinephrine should readily be available to treat early anaphylactic reactions. Intramuscular schedule for modern vaccines such as tissue culture and duck embryo vaccines. The Essen regimen, one dose to be given on days 0, 3, 7, 14, and 28. All intramuscular injections must be given into the deltoid region or in infants, the anterolateral area of the thigh. Vaccines should never be given in the gluteal region. As an alternative, the 2-1-1 regimen may be used. Two doses are given on day zero, one on the right deltoid and another on the left deltoid. One dose is given on the deltoid region on day seven and the final dose is given on the deltoid region on day 21. Intradermal schedule is also allowed for modern vaccines. These schedules require considerably less vaccine and produce a comparable degree of protection. Appropriate when vaccine or money is in short supply and in centers with an established cold chain. Precautions to be adhered to for ID injection include staff training, conditions and duration of vaccine storage after reconstitution, use of appropriate 1 ml syringes, and short needles. The decision to implement economical ID treatment rests with government agencies which sel select appropriate policies on rabies prophylaxis. Vaccines proven to be efficacious. Human diploid cell vaccine, purified vero cell vaccine, purified chick embryo vaccine, and purified duck embryo vaccine. Intradermal regimens demonstrated to be immunogenic are the two-site intradermal method, which is 2-2-2-0-1-1, for use with either the PVRV, PCEC, or PDEV vaccines. The next method is the eight-site intradermal method, which is 8 0 4 0 1, 1 for use with HDCV and PCEC vaccines. The eight sites regimen should be considered when no RIG is available. The two site intradermal method is as follows for use with PVRV, PCEC, and PDEV. The volume is one fifth of an IM dose per site, meaning if the IM dose is 0.5 ml, the ID dose is 0.1 ml per site. The schedule is on days 0, 3, and 7, one ID dose in each of two sites. On days 28 and 90, one ID dose at one site. For the 8 site intradermal method, which is 804011, this is for use with HDCV and PCEC vaccines where IM dose is 1 ml after reconstitution, and the schedule is as follows. On day 0, 0 0.1 ml is given at each of 8 sites over the deltoid, the lateral thigh, suprascapular area, and the lower quadrant of the abdomen. On day 7, 0 0.1 ml at each of 4 sites. On days 28 and, 30, on, and 90, 0 0.1 ml at 1 site. For previously vaccinated persons, you still require local treatment of the wound and the schedule is as follows. One dose on days 0 and 3. Use either one standard IM dose, 1 ml or 0.5 ml depending on the vaccine, or one intradermal dose of 0.1 ml using any vaccine type. No ra rabies immunoglobulin should be applied. However, full treatment should be given to previously vaccinated persons if the persons who received pre- or post-exposure treatment with vaccines are of prove unproven potency, or in persons who have not demonstrated an unacceptable rabies neutralizing antibody titer. For pre-exposure immunization, these are the people who have a high risk of exposure, laboratory staff working with rabies vaccines, veterinarians, animal handlers, and wildlife officers. The regimens for pre-exposure immunization are as follows. Days 0, 7, and 28, 
1 dose of 1 ml standard IM dose or 0.1 ml intradermal dose and the site is at the deltoid area in adults or anterior lateral thigh in infants. Never use the gluteal area. Contraindications for such are if antimalarial in medication is applied concurrently, IM injections are preferable to intradermal injections. Persons working in diagnostic, research, and vaccine production laboratories should have a blood sample every six months and a booster when the titer falls below 0.5 in international units per ml. For others, testing is done every year and a booster when the tidal falls below 0.5 international units per ml. Thank you very much and have a good day.